Good day, science kids. Welcome to our third lesson in this quarter entitled Water Cycle. The Earth is covered with 75% of water. Oceans and seas are two biggest bodies of seawater, or salt water. They covered 97% of the volume of water on Earth. Only 3% is fresh water, but most of this is in the form of ice and glaciers. There is a minimal volume of water, less than 1% that is available to the living things in the community. For our quick review, identify the following uses of water. Do you get all the numbers right? Great! Now, let's move on to our new topic. In our previous lesson, we have learned that water is a renewable resource because we can use the same water in the past hundred, thousand, or even million years ago. Thank God for His wisdom. We have the process of water cycle. Water is important for the maintenance of life. People use a lot of fresh water out of the water table every day. How does nature continue to deliver fresh water to the earth? Class, water is naturally restored by the process of water cycle or the hydrologic cycle. Have you ever wondered where the rain comes from? Or how the clouds are formed? This is what the water cycle is all about. When the sun heats up the rivers, oceans, seas, and other bodies of water, the water becomes water vapor. It rises in the air. This process is called evaporation. It is the first step in water cycle. Together with this process is transpiration. Transpiration happens when plants and trees release water before in the air. Plants and animals use and reuse water and release water vapor in the air. When trees and plants release water in the air, transpiration occurs. In the same manner, human and animals release gas in the atmosphere in the form of water vapor through the process called respiration water travel in our atmosphere in the form of water before warm water before rises through the earth atmosphere kids if you want to see water vapor at home try to heat some water with the help of course of the elderly one never never do it alone as the water gets heated you will be able to see water vapor rising in the air when water vapor reaches up the sky, it turns into a tiny droplets of water. These water droplets, along with the various gases and dust particles, come together to form a cloud. This is known as condensation. Look at the water droplets in the plastic covering the hot water. That's exactly what condensation is. When the clouds become too heavy and it cannot hold any more water inside, it bursts open to give out rain, hail, or snow. This is known as precipitation. As it rains, water gets collected in ocean, lakes, rivers, and other seeps through the ground or through the soil and becomes groundwater. This is what we call collection. Water cycle is continuous process of evaporation, condensation, and precipitation, and collection. Water cycle is extremely important process because it enables the availability of water for all living organisms. 
if water didn't naturally recycle itself, we would run out of clean water which is essential to life. Believe it or not, our body weight is about 60% water. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, our body uses water in all its cells, organs, and tissues to help regulate temperature and maintain other bodily function. Because our body loses water through breathing, sweating, and digestion, it is important to rehydrate by drinking at least 8 glasses of water a day and, of course, eating food that contains water. Experiment time! In this experiment, you need to prepare the following. Hot water, ice cubes, cup, large clear bowl or canister, and cling wrap. Pour hot water in the canister. As you can see, water vapor rises. The water in liquid states turns into gas state. That process is called evaporation. Now, let's add some salt in the hot water and stir to make it salt water. If you try to taste the water, it is salty and it is no longer fresh water. It can be compared to the water in oceans and seas, a hard water. Now, let us place dry cup in the middle of the canister and cover the canister with cling wrap. Place the ice on the middle top portion of the cling wrap. Then observe the setup. Have you observed the droplets in the plastic? That can be compared to condensation. Have you noticed the water dropping in the glass at the middle of the canister? That can be compared to precipitation. And the collected water in the glass is no longer salt water but fresh water. That is one way of removing salt from salt water. That is desalination. Okay, now to better understand the activity, let's try to answer the guide questions. 1. What happens to the boiling water? Or, what have you observed when I pour the boiling water in the canister? What process of water cycle is represented? Yes, some water turned into water vapor. That process is evaporation, the first step in water cycle. 2. What did you observe inside the plastic? What process of water cycle is represented? That's right. Inside the plastic are water droplets. This represents condensation in water cycle. 3. What did you notice inside the cup? What process is represented in this? Right, inside the cup are falling droplets of water from behind the cling wrap, covering the container with ice on top. The falling droplets represent precipitation in water cycle. What do you think are the role of adding ice on the setup very good the ice speeds up the condensation of water before the rate of evaporation and condensation is affected by temperature high temperature means fast evaporation while low temperature means fast condensation 
For activity number two, trace the process in the water cycle. Fill in the blanks with the correct parts of water cycle. Water from oceans, rivers, and lands goes up in the air due to the sun's heat and changes to vapor through the process called evaporation. Plants absorb water from runoff and evaporate the water into the atmosphere through the process of transpiration. Water vapor in the atmosphere changes to tiny droplets of water that form clouds through the process of condensation. And water droplets in the clouds change to rain, snow, sleet, and hail that fall to the earth through the process of precipitation. Do this activity in your ISN to service your output for today's lesson. Now to check your understanding, identify what is being described in the following statements. 1. It is the process of changing water vapor to water droplets. 2. This happens when the water from the atmosphere returns to the Earth's surface in the form of rain, snow, sleet, and hail. 3. The change from liquid water to water vapor is due to the heat absorption. 4. It is the part of earth where greatest evaporation occurs. 4. It is the part of the earth where greatest evaporation occurs. And number 5. It is the process in which heavy clouds changed into rain. Now compare your answer. Do you get all the numbers right? Great! I know you are now ready to answer the post-test. Enjoy learning!